I know that I love sports. How do you love? How do I know you love sports? Everybody today why, is yeah. talking about the midterms. Mm-hmm. How's it gonna go? Are we gonna win? Are they gonna lose tonight at six thirty? I will be glued to my TV waiting for results of Eastern Michigan, Maxion, Ball Burner. State, uh, Ohio, Burner. Toledo. You know the Mid American Conference. Mm-hmm. You know, people are gonna be talking about democracy. Uh, I'm not worried about that. You know what I'm worried about? Does Blaine Gabbert's little brother come back and put some points on the board for Miami, Ohio? Yeah. After going out against Kentucky. That's what I'm worried about. Blaine Gabbert's little brother? Blaine Gabbert's little brother. Is he nice? He's, he's got some shortness in him, couple... but, he's, but he's got a little witch in him. Okay. He can run around. If, if, I think if he was hmm. 6'2", he'd probably be how does he spell his? How does he spell his name? Uh, with an E. Mm, that yeah, with mean. an E. But, it, but. In it best. But. <laughs> and, you know, you know, Conan, it was crazy. Watching all these updates of, you know, because it's like sports, politics, sports, politics, sports, mm-hmm. politics. Did you see the way that the Fetterman ended his rally? What he oh, said at the end of his crazy. speech? I thought it was something, hold on, was it something like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, guys. That's messed up. How dare you? Huh? All right. <laughs> How dare you guys? How dare you? 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 How that was Stephen Hawking's last words. My man said, "Hey guys, good night." Yeah, those are Stephen Hawking's last words. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk over that man's grave. Do you have the paintball gun yet? Or not? <sighs> Look. Oh man. yeah, you're taking five to the back. I'm taking I mean, five should it to be the a back. this week thing? Better than five you know? to the front. Better than five to the front. Darby Lou tried to shut this thing down. Darby tried to shut it. Yeah, down. she's like, "You're a dad now. You already have back problems." He's I'm not like, shooting you with an AK-47. I was like, I was like. I'm a man of my word. I'm yeah. gonna look. I'm gonna take the punishment for my bets, unlike some other people. Yeah, you know, who don't you know? Mm. I'm, no shots at you guys. No, Pie in the face. No, this wait, guy's no, over here eating one chip challenge. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, guys who make fantasy bets, the and then the guys, guys who make fantasy bets. And, doo, doo, no, not yeah. me. Yeah, man's making moves like Tavon Austin. So you want it? I like Tavon. There. You want it rapid? Rapid? You want it single? Single shot? You really want to feel the pain? You want it? You just want to? This is a fantasy bet loss. Five, five, five shots as quick as you can. Let's get it over with. All right. Five shots, no chaser. you love to see it. Tom Luganville joins us to share his college football power rankings. We're going to give you ours as well. The Ravens beat the Saints in New Orleans on Monday night. Dennis Allen, ooh, gross. And Jeff Saturday is now the interim head coach of the Colts. And Joy Taylor thinks it's racist. I'm Jay Crane, and welcome to Crane & Company. Marcus Freeman getting hired at Notre Dame recently was one of the biggest splashes of the offseason after Brian Kelly bolted for the purple and gold pastures of LSU. Now, while Freeman didn't have any head coaching experience before he was viewed as one of the best up-and-coming coaches around, he's come through pretty much. Now, this season's been somewhat of a roller coaster for Notre Dame after starting out 0-2 with a bad loss to Marshall and a mid-season loss to lowly Stanford. And there were some questions brought up about Marcus Freeman and the future of one of college football's biggest brands in Notre Dame. But after the physical beatdown of Clemson last Saturday, most of those qualms have died down. But it got me thinking, not only does Notre Dame have a new man at the helm, it seems they also have a new mindset. This Notre Dame team isn't flashy. They aren't a sexy offense with a bend-but-don't-break defense. They're an overtly physical, smash mouth defensive team. Now, that doesn't mean they will never be good on offense or that Tommy Reese and the gang don't want to light up the scoreboard every weekend. But it's not how Notre Dame views itself anymore. Remember, in the past, they had some really good offenses and some good guys up front, but when they would get to the playoffs, they would just get overwhelmed with physicality. Or to put it plainly, they would get smushed. Now, Freeman exudes physicality and confidence by what he preaches and the way he goes about it. He doesn't want Notre Dame to be the nail anymore. He wants them to be the hammer. And while there are still questions about whether he can lead Notre Dame to those big games, there is one thing that is for damn sure. They won't be scared. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my be scared, baby. former Michigan quarterback, former Heisman candidate, uh, David Cohn, my brother, Western Colorado, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, mm-hmm. current NFL free agent, curator of the chat, 
and vice president of Seven Footer Island. Vice president. Guys, oh, so like guys, that. when we look, guys, when we look. So this is the thing. Vice okay. president. We'll, we'll, come, we'll come back. No, we'll come. We'll, it's we'll, my we'll, island. It's not your island. I may, I created the Have island. Have you ever seen Braveheart? When he says, talking about Ireland, he goes, well, it's your island. Yeah, it's my island. This isn't That's Braveheart, what Dave. That's what this it is. This isn't Braveheart. Okay. This is Blaine's You had a good idea. You had a great idea. Look. You had a great idea. You're the creative. And then you had to step out of the way. For a true CEO. You're getting to the point where you turn into the guy, next thing you know, you turned into one of the seven footers who's locked up in the back. Wow, that's yeah. a threat. You're back there with He's ben, you're back you there up. with you're back there with Ben Simmons right now. <laughs> the audacity. You're back there with Ben Simmons right now. Ben Simmons. Yeah. Hold on, first of all, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Why is Ben Simmons on the island? That's why you're not. In seven, he's basically a seven footer. No, he's not. Hold Close. On, hold he's on, like hold six on. eight. And he's six hold nine. On. Kevin, you're six Maybe seven. Six, nine. You're six six. What do you mean? You don't have to be seven footer. Why are you on the island? You have to yeah, be seven foot to run the island. Don't make the rules of my island. Wait, your island is in the the universe of the Booster Club, of Booster mm -hmm. Club world. True, yes. It's one my island. island. My, 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 say it again. I'm the king my of the, the world. So therefore, it's really my You're island. You're the king of the world? Of the world that I've created. What? You know, this isn't this. My island's not in your world. What, when, what was it created on? Hmm? Where was the island created? Oh, I got lost a while ago. Yeah, with, from my mouth. I'm running seven footer island. I don't know. I don't like when you get lost from Blaine's mouth. Uh, anyway, looking Notre at the Dame. future, looking, looking, <laughs> looking to the future. I put this question on Twitter: Who's got a brighter one, Notre Dame or Clemson? And I think a lot of people will instantly jump up and say, Clemson. Mm -hmm. It's Clemson. It's Clemson. It's Clemson because they've had success. They are in the ACC, and I get it. You can make a logical argument for either side. But here's why I say Notre Dame. And I think they will join a conference eventually. I think they're going to have to. I think they're going to be forced to with the movement of super conferences and, and the, the dwindling down, I guess you could say, of, of conferences in general. I feel like Marcus Freeman actually gives Notre Dame a chance to dance when they get to the ball. What does that mean? They've shown they've been able to get there, especially on down years with a schedule where USC hasn't been great. Some of the other teams that they typically play every year haven't been great. And they've been able to take teams that, that – may have an Ian Book that can run around at quarterback and be a witch and, and do things on offense and have game breakers down the field. But it seemed like every time they would get there, they would just get bullied. Just bullied. Just out physical. You can go back and watch what Eddie Lacy did to him. You can go through the gamut of Notre Dame getting to the playoff and just getting smushed. I think Marcus Freeman can recruit the type players and has the type personality where the question is not, can Notre Dame do something when they get there? It's can they get there? That, that's the question. Because ha watching them play, it's so different. If you just turn the, if you just close your eyes and you turn the volume up on the TV, you can just listen to the way that Notre Dame plays mm. and it sounds different than it mm. used to. Offensively, they are a true, because they don't have a quarterback right now that can throw the ball confidently. Let's just be honest. I think Tommy Reese is good enough as an OC and a play caller to be able with a quarterback that is competent, which he's the OC. He signed off on these quarterbacks. They're a huge part of recruiting the quarterback, so he has some to blame. But they are a downhill, running, take care of the ball, play action, defense, and special teams type of team. I think that he can use that physical mindset, bring in the type players that Notre Dame has to have, and when they get there, they can actually stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these teams physically. And I would much rather, I would much rather have a team that the odds of them getting there aren't as good but the odds of them being able to ball when they get there are better. And I really think mm. that with the mindset Marcus Freeman's bringing in and the way he's recruiting, that Notre Dame has a little bit of a – it's not a wide gap. I don't think Dabo and Clemson and them are going anywhere. I don't think they're going anywhere. First time he's missed on a quarterback in God knows how long. It's just the truth. But I do think Notre Dame a little bit brighter future. A little bit – and North Carolina's coming up. I think Miami's going to end mm. up flipping around with Mario. FSU with Mike Norvell. Can they keep on the track? How's the weight going to look with Dave Clawson when Sam Hartman leaves? Uh, we know there's some teams in the ACC that are up and coming. Syracuse, how's that going to look like with Dino? Can he continue the momentum going forward even though they've lost three straight? I'm going Notre Dame here. Conference or no conference, the future of Notre Dame is always going to be bright because it's one of the greatest brands in college football. Um, I'm interested to see what kind of identity this football team has under Marcus Freeman as he moves forward because it's starting to look like the identity is going to be a power run team with a blue-collar, hard-nosed defense. Yeah. And if that's the case, that's going to be scary. And that's a Midwestern team. That's why I think they should join the Big Ten. So I think, I think uh, you know, Notre Dame is going to be great moving forward under Marcus Freeman. If I had to pick one, though— I mean, it wasn't that long ago Notre Dame beating Clemson at home 
wouldn't have been wouldn't have even gotten a golf clap. Wouldn't yeah. have been that big a deal because that's what's expected. So I think the fact that this is a signature win this past weekend for Marcus Freeman just tells you what Dabo Sweeney has done with that's this Clemson very program. So if Dabo Swine- Sweeney continues to be the head coach at Clemson and not maybe go take the Alabama job one day, not go home if he's offered that job, then I'm still going to go with Clemson because what he's done at that university is unbelievable. I think he may be the only coach outside the SEC with multiple national championships since the SEC dominance took over in 2006 when the SEC went on that huge run. So for my money, I'm, I'm going to stick with Clemson and Dabo Sweeney as long as he's the head coach, but I wouldn't be surprised if he were to go to Alabama at some point where he played college ball. Yeah, it, it would never surprise me yeah. going home. I just wonder if, if Dabo wants to be the guy that follows Nick. I, I just know he's very smart and that's tough, and he's so I can coach at Clemson forever. But again, it's a little bit different when mama comes calling. We always talk about that. That's why I'm a little bit iffy on Auburn hiring Deion Sanders because what happens if Mike Norvell falls off the trampoline next year? Mm -hmm. They fire him. Deion's got a year of experience now. It's a lot easier to hire him at his alma mater, which I think he And Dabo's young enough. Someone There could be a tenure in between, maybe. Yeah. Again, I I don't think people realize, too, you know, how much longer guys are coaching nowadays effectively mm -hmm. than they used to be able to. Dabo's still young. And coach, I mean, look at Saban. He's 300. He's older than Gandalf out there coaching. But that's I wonder what, what the odds would be. I wonder what the Vegas odds are on Dabo Sweeney finishing his career at Clemson. I I'd would, like to know what those odds. I, are. I, I would like probably to know. Some, there's probably odds out there somewhere. I, I would say so there's I would some say, odds. I would say like minus one. And I bet they're I bet they're as close as they can. Yeah, yeah I bet it's like yeah. minus one. Minus one twenty. Yeah. Basically, a pick them. <laughs> Blaine, I, I'm not yes. arguing whether Notre Dame or Clemson is going to fall off a cliff. Okay. It's just arguing who's said Hugh got him on the mind. Whose future is better between Notre Dame or Clemson from a championship standpoint? Remember, the playoff is expanding to 12, which obviously helps Notre Dame a lot. Helps helps Clemson, too, I guess, per se, but Clemson's been winning the ACC pretty regularly. Who has a brighter future in your opinion? I would say Clemson, just because, one, you see, regardless of who they lose coordinator-wise, Clemson under Dabba will always be talented. He recruits. You look at that defense. I know that defense kind of fallen off a little bit this year. They have been banged up. But what has Clemson missed this year? And that's on a quarterback with DJU. And guys, they're only they have one loss. Yeah. You know, you go back to the year before that. They'll always be in the running. They'll always have a certain standard of a team just because Dabo's there and the way Dabo is and the way he elevates his players and the coaches around him. Marcus Freeman has done a great job at Notre Dame, but I have to see more. And I know it's his first year, but right now you got three losses. I believe. All right. You go back to Island. Brian Kelly well, lost one game last year. Then you got beat in the playoffs. And you go back the year before that, you get beat by Bama in the playoffs. So winning at Notre Dame is one thing. You have to be consistent throughout the season. You can't be excited if you're Notre Dame, right? Because the way you're recruiting, you're recruiting well, right? But still, you didn't see Brian Kelly dropping games at Marshall. You didn't see Brian Kelly dropping games at Stanford. Right. You see Brian Kelly dropping big games in the playoffs just because well, they're out. Well, you also didn't see Brian Kelly coach his first college game as a head coach at Notre Dame. Uh, and look at the first two teams that Marcus Freeman played. I, I get with you on the Marshall. I, I think when we're comparing Brian Kelly and Marcus Freeman, they took over Notre Dame at different parts of their career. Look where Brian Kelly had coached before. He had that experience. He's put his staff together. He's had to put a recruiting plan together, do the fundraising, do the speeches. So I, I get what you're saying. I feel like we need a little bit more sample size with Marcus starting off. For sure. But, but do you think... Notre Dame, like like looking forward, and I want the Booster Club and in the comments on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe, by the way, to the channel. Turn those notifications on by hitting that bell. If Notre Dame were to join the ACC, let's just play the hypothetical, instead of the Big Ten, which I'm with you. I think you can make an argument either way. I think they, they could fit in both, I and mean, we already see them in basketball. But what do you think is a better fit for Notre Dame from them having success perspective? The Big Ten right now, where it looks really top-heavy with Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State's a good team. There's really nobody in that second tier that you're like, these guys can really, really be dangerous. Or the ACC, where Clemson's run roughshod over the league, and you don't really have another elite team. You really have two in the Big Ten, one in the ACC. Which one do you think is more advantageous, David, for Notre Dame? Well, think about it. They've played the top two teams this season from each of those conferences. <laughs> they lost to the Buckeyes, and they just beat Clemson. Now, one was on the road and one was at home, but the answer has to be the ACC, I think, right now. The Big Ten is not as strong as it has been in years past, right? The second, especially if they were to keep divisions, and especially if Notre Dame were to be on the west side that of that That would be one. Which I don't know if the Big Ten is going to move forward with divisions. And I don't think you they can will. Only I don't put, think we'll have divisions. I mean, you could only put so many more teams in 
in the Big Ten East, right? Like if you have Michigan and Ohio and Michigan State and Penn State all on that side. So I don't know how that's going to shake up, but you would have to feel better about being in the ACC. I think if if your too. only goal is just to roll over weaker competition week in and week out. Now, yeah. Clemson's still as good as it gets at the very, very top, but I think Notre Dame is going to beat the Virginias and Virginia Techs, you know, and, and maybe even like Louisville on a more consistent basis. Mm -hmm. I just want to see him in the Big Ten West. Yeah, it'd be I fun. I just want to see him. I think it would Why bring not? great balance. I like For it. Sure. Even, if, even just from a name standpoint of mm -hmm. having somebody in that other division that you're like, all right, it's going to be a fist fight at the end. But again, going forward, I think the SEC is going to get rid of divisions. Pac 12 already got rid of them. I think the Big 12. Are, who already got rid of them. Uh, the ACC, I think, is going to get rid of them. The Big Ten is going to get rid of them. I think we're not going to have divisions because it messes up scheduling. Mm -hmm. Scheduling should be you should play every team home and away over a four-year career if possible. That means adding conference games, add conference games, which you're going to see in the SEC. They're going to add that ninth game with Oklahoma and Texas coming. But Blaine made a great oh, point. And with USC and UCLA coming in? Yes. Imagine that. USC, UCLA, I think Jim Leonard's going to have success at Wisconsin. Imagine if Nebraska could finish it, uh, could figure it out. Now, all of a sudden, if you were to add Notre Dame into that mix, I mean, that's a nice it's, conference. It, look, it's a, it's a, a all-you-can-watch college football buffet and enjoy. But Blaine, Blaine's right. Clemson will always be talented. Why? Because they're athletic. But I'm going to tell you about something else that's athletic. Athletic Greens are good friends over there. Uh, you know, I started taking Athletic Greens because I was, you know, I know we moved this show to the morning, but I'm used to getting up in the morning. But for some reason, I was getting a little more tired, a little more tired, a little more tired throughout the day. And by 1, 2 o'clock, you know, I've worked the toughest manual labor jobs that there is. I mean, uh, I did construction and moved a wheelbarrow full of bricks to the dumpster off Broken Lots. I woke up in the morning and cut uh, greens basically with a push mower on a golf course that had a little bit of a socket where you can move it forward a little bit. I've done tough manual labor jobs, but I'm getting older and I'm getting more tired. So that's why I started taking them. And guys, it has worked. I have more energy. I feel better. It's really easy. You can reclaim your health. You can arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, all right? And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free, that's right, four-letter word, starts with an F, free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash crane and company. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash crane and company to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Cone, you're a father. You take Athletic Greens. Why? Gut health. Yeah. How can the rest of your body be healthy if you're not focused on gut health? That's exactly That's why I've been taking it. Blaine, is that why your mustache and beard comes in so elegantly and lush? Wow, really needed that today. I appreciate it. The real no question problem. is, when I just come back with the stash, all right? At what point was it? Middle of the month? You know, we'll see. I'm going to add. That's a you decision. Yeah. Your body, your choice. But hey, when it comes to athletic greens, one immune system, especially right now with all the sicknesses going around, seasons changing, it's getting a little cold, the sniffles are coming, energy, immune system. It really works, and I really enjoy it. That was a great little. I appreciate that, that, that was great guys. by you. It's so I mean, sophisticated. Yeah. Speaking of sophisticated, what's what's going on in the let's club? Get to, let's, get let's get to the people. Let's get to what are the people, people saying? Let's get to the people, and they need answers. Okay. All right. Let's go to Josh McSwain first. A ten dollar donation. Josh, oh, thanks, gosh. buddy. Hi. Thank you for your money. All right. Good morning, gents. All right. Never thought I would ever turn turn notifications on for a show, but here I am every morning listening to the best in the biz. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for revitalizing. Re Revitalizing. Got this. It's a long one in the morning, you know. Got this. My love for sports, guys. Josh, we appreciate. Josh, appreciate imagine you, buddy, getting up early in the day and winning the day. That's, that's exactly just like Josh just did. I don't. I don't look. The early bird doesn't catch the worm. I wake up and shoot the early bird and cook it with breakfast with eggs and some toast. How's that taste? <laughs> like like bird. Then I, now I'm trusting yeah, the signs. So, yeah, yeah. Now I'm trusting exactly the bird right. signs. I'm in the exactly look, man. Right. I'm gonna get on DraftKings right now. Do it. All right, Mike Danju with a $4.99 donation. Thank says, you, Mike. Says, it's pronounced Danju. Thank you, Mike. You guys ready to jump on the fire Cliff Kingsbury train? I got a pitchfork ready for you. The cards are one and two with hop. Look, look, light, of our punter guns. look, look, light up the torch. Let's walk through the city and find the problem. Mm. Uh, the Cardinals, to me, looked so lethargic offensively. You're three and five. You're three and five. It's a division game at home. You're playing the Seahawks who's a great story, but it's a winnable game. And I picked you guys to win. You were one of the only bets I missed on Sunday. All of that being said, we talked about Cliff Kingsbury's biggest problem being what? He would fall off a cliff halfway through the season because he wouldn't adjust. And when the scouting report came back, they were able to figure out every move that Kyler was running around and doing that the Cardinals offense was doing. I know you didn't have Hopkins for the first six weeks. You got him back, so there is no excuse for how bad that offense looked. I know the defense doesn't have a ton of talent. 
All right, I know there's not a bunch of all pros running around on air, on the Cardinals' defense. I understand that. You're an offensive team. That was a disgusting performance in a game that really you had to have. But these three weeks for the Cardinals, this last one they just lost and the next two, is going to define really whether they're in the hunt or they're not in the hunt. And you laid an egg, and you laid an egg. And there's blame to go around. You can put some on Kyler for not for not being able to recognize the hot whenever whenever anybody blitzes him ever. But I feel like at some point you took a chance with Cliff Kingsbury and you already paid him the cut. You you extended him, him and Kyler. You made that you got in bed with both of them. You made the deal to extend them and ride this thing out. And now you're going to have to do it. Now are they good enough to turn it around? Yes. But at what point is Cliff Kingsbury going to be this off- offensive savant that everybody thought he was going to be in the NFL? It's just. To me, it's it's getting worse and worse, and I'm almost I'm almost to the point. I, I'm almost to that point to be with you. And guess which coach is sitting out there on TV right now? No, yeah. waiting. Sean Payton. Sean E. P. Sean Payton. Sean Ready P. to be hired, boys. Would Cliff Kingsbury go back to college? I think he would. Would he be the next coach at Auburn? I think. No, we're straight on that. <laughs> um, I think he would. I would not be sure. But it's uh, part of me is like, yeah, I think Cliff would go back. But I feel like Cliff is like kind of in that. Like recycle, like the recycle bin in the NFL now. You know, like in the NFL, one guy gets fired and instantly has a job like two weeks later. Hell, half the time it's the same job. You can get fired from being the head coach one place, be the head coach the other place. Mm. You can get you can get fired as the head coach in one place, do the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys three weeks later. It's a recycling bin. That's what the NFL is, which is it's great when you're in it. Because you always have a job. Just spin me around, round, round, round. I get around. I get around. Wow. All right, Ken Johnson, $10 donation. Appreciate it, Ken. Thanks, says, KJ. Hey, I guess we're just staying on the topic. He says, when we will all agree that Kingsbury's got to go. Wow. Oh, Look, I, I understand you guys waking up and choosing violence this morning. I feel like it. it's almost a little bit too late, to be honest with you. I, I mean, we just went through it. Y'all know where I stand on it. All right, this Thistlemore Pottery, $20 donation. Ooh, appreciate let's go. It. Hold on, how about a little Shopify sound for that? Hit that. Huh? There you I go. I like that. Um, it's just like sound green, like you green a three and two K. All right, as a Notre Dame fan, I'm so tired of hearing how great Reese is. He's an average at best OC and a terrible QB coach. Every single QB he's coached has regressed every year. Also, there's no chance they join a conference if they aren't forced. Oh, I, I the second point, I agree. Here's the thing with Tommy, and Tommy's still young. I he was the OC when Ian Book was there, correct? Mm. I mean, he's been there for he's been there for a little bit now. Look, is Tommy the most innovative play caller of all time? No, especially for a young guy. He's not as new school as some of the other young guys that are in that crop or even some of the guys that are older to him, older than him. I can understand the frustration. If I would have frustration with Tommy Reese, it's because of who he's had at the quarterback position. Just like my same gripe with Jimbo Fisher is, is not just that the offense isn't playing great or they can't play good two out of three phases, it seems like, on any given weekend. It's you looked at Haynes King and said, this is the guy. You watched tape of him and said, this is the guy that's going to be our quarterback. And then he got to campus, and you still decided he was the guy. With Tommy Reese, you are a huge part of the quarterbacks that get not only recruited but developed. That would be my biggest gripe with Tommy Reese. There's been a lot of – play calling is a fickle thing, guys. It's a very fickle thing. A lot of people, especially in the NFL, you look, a lot of them run similar stuff, right? A lot of guys run similar stuff in college. It's a They're copycat leagues. All right, The, The difference is the personnel. Can you call plays that are tailored to your personnel better than the next guy? It's not just, all right, it's a light box, let's run inside zone. Or, all right, uh, uh, it's a heavy box, let's spit it out on the screen. Or, hey, uh, we want to run, you know, get in 10 personnel, right slot, strong, uh, Z10, X dog. Whatever whatever you want to run, that's fine. It's how do you tailor it to your personnel and your matchups? Because there's been a lot of great play callers and great schemers and great game planners that look like idiots because their players weren't good enough, which falls on the coaches to have good enough players. It's a double-edged sword. And then on the other hand, there's been a lot of play callers that aren't exactly Nostradamus or savants when it comes to calling plays or game planning, but look like geniuses because they have the best players. Okay, so I think we got to make sure we separate those two. But but you you, if the Notre Dame offense looks as anemic as it does this year at this point next year, then I think we can really start talking about Tommy Reese and see how it's going for Notre Dame because if it doesn't go good next year, I think you'll see Marcus Freeman fire a coordinator, and I don't think it's going to be Al Gold. So Tommy Reese has been the quarterback coach at Notre Dame since 2017, which was Ian Book's first year, freshman year. Ian Ian had a pretty good career. Yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. And um, 
uh, Tommy Reese's first season as offensive coordinator was 2020. They went 10-2 and two that year and lost to Alabama in the semifinal. Yeah, so uh, again, I, I think you can have gripes, though, about Tommy. I can understand that, but I think we need to make sure we understand what we're griping about. You're griping about the personnel. We need to be able to separate the two. You may not like both. You may think he doesn't know personnel and he doesn't know how to call plays, and that's more power to you. But in my opinion, I think it's more about the personnel that he's selected, not the plays that he's selected. All right, let's get to a manual C. $8.88 animation. All right. If Tyreek Hill ends up breaking Calvin Johnson's single season reception yards record this year, is Tyreek Hill a Hall of Famer? If yes, then which ballot? You know, mm. I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. Tyreek Hill is an unbelievable player. Unbelievable player. The, you could make an argument he is the most dangerous player and the highest level of football in the world in the NFL. I just feel like to be a Hall of Famer, it's all encompassing. I feel like with what happened with him in college, and look, I know people make mistakes, and I, I believe that people can change. But if you have a, a charge on you where you put your hands on a female or something like that, I don't think you should be in the Hall of Fame. I think the Hall of Fame should be reserved for the utmost in character and the utmost in talent. I will always believe that. Uh, now, people will say, but Jake, you don't want Pete, you, you think Pete Rose should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame, and he got in trouble for betting on his own team. I think it's a little bit different betting on your own team and getting charged with what Tyreek Hill got charged with and the reason he had to leave Oklahoma State and go to West Alabama. He's an unbelievable player, and I don't want to be a buzzkill, and I don't think I'm being a buzzkill, but I think to, be the hall, to make the Hall of Fame, the best of the best, that have ever played in the NFL, I don't think it's just about on the field. I think it's all-encompassing. That's why I think it should be so hard to make the Hall of Fame. And while I agree with, I agree somewhat with guys like Deion Sanders who's saying it is too easy to make the Hall of Fame nowadays. So I think character has to be encompassed in this hmm. as well. I like that. All right, All right let's go to William Repstad. Uh, $5 donation. Thank you, Will. Um, he says, why is no one talking about Caleb Williams for Heisman? If he balls against UCLA and Notre Dame, won't he be the front runner? You just answered your question. You just answered your own question. He really hasn't had a chance to have that moment yet, right? They had the big game where they played to Utah and they barely lost. He's had a big year. But USC's, how crazy is this? USC's been under the radar the whole time. They have one loss with Caleb Williams and all the weapons they have on offense. And you say, why? Well, they haven't had an opportunity to showcase themselves in big time games. Well, coming down the stretch, they're going to get that opportunity. If Caleb Williams is going to win the Heisman, and if USC is going to put themselves in a position to not only win the Pac-12, but have a chance to make the playoff, they're going to do it late because that's how the schedule works out. That's the main reason you're going to start hearing more and more and more about USC as we get closer toward the end of the season because those are when the big games pop up. Let me read uh, Let me read some stats for you real quick here. Go ahead. Caleb Williams so far this year, 2,700 yards, 28 touchdowns, one pick mm -hmm. and a 64% completion percentage. Drake May so far this year, we were talking about it the other day, 2,900 yards, 31 TDs, three interceptions, and a 71% And the crazy part percentage. is Drake Ooh. May is way more important to his team than Caleb Williams is. Mm. As crazy as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, Drake May may be the most important player to his team out there. But, Coney, let's get into a... Uh, do you, you want to go into a punter go? Let's you? punter go here. Let's go Look, punter go before we bring Luke Monday Punt night football our... last oh. night. Ravens twenty seven, oh. Saints thirteen. That's the Ravens' third straight victory. Are they a Super Bowl contender? They are well, a Super Bowl contender. Why did punter I go? Who, remember who I said I thought won the trade deadline? The Ravens. It's not about quantity of moves. It's about quality. Are you plugging up the holes where the leaks in the boat are? Are are you just adding cool knickknacks on the side of the boat? The Ravens had a huge leak in the boat. They couldn't stop the run. They've been beat up on offense. Hell, Mark Andrews didn't play last year, uh, our last game. Uh, th they traded for Roquan Smith, who's leading the league in tackles with 83 coming in. He is a run stopper, probably the best in the league. Is he the best blitzer? No. Is he the best guy in pass coverage? No. But when it comes to running downhill and stopping the run, Roquan Smith is a runaway freight train with the instincts of Daredevil and Batman coming together to have some super child they created in a lab with Dr. Frankenstein. Watching this guy patrol from ta end of the tackle box to the end of the tackle box is like watching a great white in a, in a mini pool when you throw some fish in there. It's just attack, attack, attack with unbelievable accuracy, unbelievable efficiency. I don't think this guy's fall stepped in 10 years. He's so good. He's so good. 
But another guy that's really good, Lamar Jackson. Let's run a clip from last night of Lamar doing things for the Saints that could be considered criminal in other states. Little zone read, he's keeping it. Mm. I mean, ugh. Mm. Look at this. Can't teach that. You can't teach that. There were a couple times where Lamar wiggled out. I mean, this is just zone read. It's kind of weird because I think they blocked this wrong. I, th I think the offensive line blocked this the opposite way of they should. They were supposed to be reading uh, the end toward the, the quarterback side, mm -hmm. yet he read the, the edge player who becomes the end, in man on the line of scrimmage, on the front side of the play, and Lamar still yeah. made the right read. Mm -hmm. It's like being dyslexic and still being able to get through the Harry Potter book clean. It's anybody, impressive. If there's anybody who can fix it, it's Lamar Jackson. That's exactly right. But the Ravens getting Roquan Smith, that, and and we, I want to give the Ravens credit. They won the game last night. But the Saints, you know, offensively, they've been pretty good. Defensively has been the problem. Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen is a great example of why you don't hire all of your friends. This dude looks clueless on the sideline. This is what he does the whole time. I want to show, show him over there. Here goes Dennis Allen. It's like bird watching. It's like, oh, look, it's an it's a, it's a East Tunisian hummingbird. Oh, look to the left. It's a daffodil dove, like, or whatever. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know different birds other than the main ones. But Those Dennis Allen looks way, in, way over his head. He looks like a guy, you know what he looks like? He looks like the guy you replaced when the guy you thought was going to be there forever bolted out of nowhere. That's what it looks like. The guy that's like, hey, Dennis was around. He can do it, right? Right? He can do it just as good as Sean. Let's let him do it. Dennis Allen's not going to make it as a Saints coach. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You might as well fire this dude now. Offensively, and I, look, I know they've been pretty decent lately. Andy Dalton's looked good. Last night looked absolutely horrified in the pocket. Alvin Kamara couldn't get anything going. It took him a quarter and a half to get the get a first down, but the, our, our, uh, to get their second first down, they got 15 yards on the first play, then got nothing almost the rest of the first half. At some point, though, the lack of energy that the Saints came in in that game, and the defense was trying to bring it. They were trying to bring it. I saw Cam Jordan. I saw Demario Davidson, who's one of my favorite linebackers and players in the league. Ty, Honey Badger, they're trying to get everybody going. It was just lethargic, and it was a pathetic performance by the New Orleans Saints. Pathetic and you should be embarrassed that that's the way you played on Monday night. Not that you lost. Teams lose. It's the way you lost. You've got a lame duck head coach. You've got a defense that's underperforming. And you've got an offense that just realized that I, I think they just realized they're not as good as what they thought they were. It's a disaster in New Orleans right now. Burn it down. How rare is an East Tunisian hummingbird? Well, you ever been to East Tunisia? It sounds Tunisian? awesome. I mean, it it's sounds like if, you could if the Saints ever? could bottle that energy, Dude. you know. Oh, you've seen a hummingbird, hummingbird fly in slow motion? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, remember one that got trapped in my garage? That's right. And they couldn't get out, and I tried to help him out, and I found him a couple days later, and he wasn't flying anymore. Tough story. Remember that story? It's a tough but story. But I want to bet trusting that sign. Yeah, you did. Okay. That's why you trust him. Next one, Jeff Saturday has now the interim head coach of the Colts, the former Pro Bowl center, and, uh, you know, Joy Taylor thinks this is racist, obviously. Here's, look. It's an interim. Look, I... The Jeff Saturday, was I surprised that Jeff Saturday was the interim coach? Yes. Do I think, Joy Taylor said this. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna read this. I, I, I just wanna read this because I wanna make sure I get this quote right because the, I think what happens is when you, when you don't have good arguments or you can't come up with, with something that is, that is tangible, that, that's not, um, that you can't come up with something that you feel like is, is a good add to the conversation, you immediately, go to race. So Jeff Saturday, who go through his qualifications real quick, Cone. Tell us who Jeff Saturday is because look, while he's seven time pro bowl seven time pro bowler, Colts. he's a Colts legend, okay? And and here's what Joy Taylor said. After Steve Wilkes, African American, was just named interim head coach of the Panthers. Carnell Williams was just named interim head coach at Auburn. Uh, we see black coaches in the league all the time now. She says, "So black coaches are never qualified enough." Got it. Oh, you want to hire a former player who's never coached in the college or the pros? Reggie Wayne, same player credentials, on the staff as a position coach? No, got it. So Joy Taylor, who's obviously raced Bader Ginsburg, um, you know, obviously left the herd. I, I know she's trying to get her name out there and, and get through it. This isn't the way to go about it, Joy. Race baiting, look, it'll, it'll work for the, the blue checks on Twitter, I guess. So it's, he was named the interim head coach. Jeff Saturday is not going to be the next head coach of the Colts. He's, he's not. 
He, this is literally a layover. This is totally different than even what Steve Wilkes, an African-American coach, who's the interim over there the Panthers is doing. He's interviewing for a job. Jeff Saturday's not interviewing for a job. And it's amazing the only coach you bring on staff is Reggie Wayne. That's the only full-time assistant coach that you bring up on staff that didn't get a look at it. Jeff Saturday has a connection to the Colts. And Reggie Wayne may end up getting an interview to be the head coach. But when you're not smart enough to come up with a coherent response to a situation that's going on in sports, and yes, I'm calling you not smart enough. That's what I'm calling you. I'm not afraid to tell it to you. I know everybody around you probably tells you what you want to hear. But then you have to go to racism. And here's the problem with this. That term is so overused, and it gets used by so many people that don't really know what it means and pretended that they experienced, that now it's the boy who cried wolf. You use it so much, it loses its effect. So now when actual racist stuff happens, okay, we it... People don't take it seriously because all you do is cry racism all the time. And I want you to keep that same energy, Joy. If that's racist, I want you to, where is your outrage for the lack of Hispanic, white, and, and Mexican, Latino players in the NFL? Where's your same energy for that? You don't complain about it when the players are 75% one color. Oh, but the coaches aren't overwhelmingly one color that looks like you, so that's a problem. You're a hypocrite is what it is. So keep that same energy because you can't say that, oh, the same people that hire the players aren't racist against the players they're hiring as employees, but the coaches they're hiring, they're definitely racist against them. The same people hire both of them, Joy. Come up with your own thoughts. Use your own brain, and then you might level up, keep leveling up. But once you jump to racism, you've already painted yourself now. You're a race baiter. You're a race better, but your brother was a hell of a player. I will say that. I mean, are we talking about the same Colts franchise where the first black head coach won a Super Bowl? It's Tony it's, Dundee? it's, a, it's maybe a the joke. greatest black head it's a, coach it's a, it's that a, I can think. That's why we started we this about, show, though. Yeah, that's why we started the show, Cone, for people like Joy Taylor. So people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. I wonder who's going to get the jobs. The question. Yeah. That that's the big question. Won't be Cliff Kingsbury. What's the chat saying? Um, well, you know, a couple of mixed things here. Let's go to Sister. Uh, let's go to Ethan Williams. He says, would it still be racist if the coach was Asian? Um, Sister Riggs says, also this lady, tell me you know nothing about football without saying you know nothing about football. Yeah. She'll be on The View in two years. Um, UGA Boy 7 says, I hate when people bring race into anything. That is true. Um, let's go to, let me finish these donations, actually. Yeah. So, um, one, let's go to... AJ Cooper, $5 donation. Appreciate it, AJ. AJ, thank you. Says, are the Ohio State fans, oh, that's funny, fans consistently refreshing their weather app to see if they're losing November 26th, Cone? <laughs> we talk about oh, physicality, Cone. I know. We've been talking about that a good bit. Um, look, it's just football is different in the Midwest from September to November. Mm -hmm. We know that. And we saw that at play last year uh, in the game, and we saw that at play this weekend when they were on the road at Northwestern. I just, I have a feeling, I just, I have a feeling the Buckeyes are going to be fine. I have a feeling so. that they're going to, look, you heard the way Ryan Day was talking after the Rose Bowl. The loss to Michigan means that you much. not jinx Michigan. They, I'm not, no. You are standing they're, they're, strong, they're, dog. They're, I got to give now, you. Now, I, I, I do think that Michigan has done enough so far these last few weeks to move ahead of the yes. Buckeyes. I would put, I have them at number two in my poll. It's the first time I've moved them ahead this season. I'm not afraid to do that. Doesn't matter. No. Doesn't matter. Just the same thing we talked about with USC and UCLA. Right now, I think USC is one notch above just because their only loss is by one point on the road at Utah. It doesn't matter because they're going to play each other. Yeah. You know? And I think UCLA in that case is a more physical team. So, look, that's it's going to be a pick em. The Buckeyes are going to be favored at home when that time comes. I just know it. And it could go. Well, either. I, I'm trying to remember when's the last time that we've had two teams basically from each conference that are still in the fight like this long. The ACC, you know, North Carolina is kind of that second team. I guess mm. you could say maybe it's still kind of Clemson, even though they're out of it. But, I mean, you know, look at the Big 12. You look at a team like TCU, which kind of that second fledgling Big 12, to, or not fledgling, but that second team in the Big 12, who's that going to be when, when it rides up at the end? It looks like can Texas knock off TCU, something like that. But, I mean, LSU and, and Ole Miss and, and Georgia and Tennessee still in the SEC, UCLA and Oregon and USC in the Pac-12, Ohio State and Michigan are battling out again in the Big Ten. I love to see, I love seeing, speaking of diversity, I love seeing the diversity of teams and what can happen at the end. Well, talking about the Buckeyes, man, Justin Fields is playing good. So this was a punter go. Justin Fields will be the first Buckeyes quarterback to truly have success in the NFL. Punter go. I'm gonna go. 
and, and I've, I've, I've done kind of a 180 on this, but it's not for the reason just that you think of him running. We all knew Justin Fields can run. I don't think his longevity and success in the NFL is going to be determined by him running for 180 yards every game. What I am seeing is he's more patient in the pocket. Their offensive line still isn't where it needs to be. His weapons still aren't where it needs to be. But I'm actually watching him go through progressions consistently now, at least getting through that second read. Watching him look off Darnell Mooney and hit Cole Komet twice for a touchdown, to me was bigger news than any run that Justin Fields will have during the whole game. It's his eye. He is so physically talented, David, and you know this. Justin Fields may have more natural physical talent, wait for it, than Lamar Jackson. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I think he's that freaky when it comes down to it. And he's thicker, and he finishes runs. I, I'm really starting to like Justin Fields, buying him three to five years down the road as a legitimate threat for the Bears who need to put pieces around him. J.G. Wentworth, I want my money, and I want it now. <laughs> a couple other things. Rashawn Gary, talking about Michigan. Rashawn Gary, ACL, out for the season with it. the Packers. The Packers, man. man just the Keeps getting home. worse. Um, Number two linebacker Anthony Hill decommits from Texas A&M. Do you see that? Yes. Again, when you don't win on the field, eventually it catches you A&M. Now, look, should they panic? Should they jump off a cliff? No. Recruiting's going to be fine. But this hurts. Mm -hmm. This hurts. Momentum is what it hurts. And it sounds like San Diego State is potentially joining the Pac-12. Have to, right? Have to. I'm going to go on this if I'm the Pac-12. Mm. I'm, and not, not only that, I'm getting them and Fresno State. And you know what? If you're not going to get one of those two, go get SMU. Go get SM, go get Rhett Lashley in those guys. Go get SMU as well. I think they're next. I think SMU could be kind of next up when it comes to who's going to move to a conference, a bigger conference. I'm just telling you, watch out for those guys. It's a private school. They've got a lot of money too. People don't realize that. Um, I, man, I think it's great for you. Got to get the market right, right? The Southern California market, right? USC and UCLA are leaving. If you're the Pac-12, now does this replace that? No. Does the combination of Fresno State and San Diego State replace USC? No. But you gotta do something, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it kind of is what it is. Blanier. All right, let's go to Carson Everett. All right, he says, Blaine Crane, I'm disappointed in myself, Carson, for missing a dono yesterday. I won't be able to sleep at night. All right, he says, Blaine Crane, I sent a dono yesterday. If AU, if Auburn could hire Bill O'Brien as head coach, no. What's your thoughts? Fair trade. No, man, I'm good on that. No, nah, yeah, yeah, I'm good on that. I think he's. I think you mean the next coach at Bama. I, I think Bill's in a great place. You know, to say there, Bill. He's he's really head coach and waiting. Just wait. Bama fans get all pissed at me and mad, and that'll never happen. It's gonna be Lane Kiffin. No, we'll see. All right, we'll let's see. go to. We had a good question in the Daily Wire chat. Do you think Hendon Hooker? I'll find the name in a second. But do you think Hendon Hooker stays for another year at Tennessee? No. Mm -mm. No. no, there's sure. an old saying, and Hendon Hooker is smart, comes from a smart family. Mm -hmm. You strike while the iron is hot. Mm -hmm. and it will never be hotter than it is now. I found the name. It was Cone in 60 Seconds. Like, Cone in 60, 60 Seconds. Does like Hendon that. Hooker play another year at I will not make a joke. And if so, what else do they need to get over that Georgia hump and win a championship? So say Hendon doesn't say. All right, what would Tennessee need to do to get over Georgia hump? If Hendon doesn't if, say? If doesn't say, if he's gone. All right. Um, look, again, you played one game against them where, where they, they controlled the pace. I mean, you don't penalize yourself as much, especially early in drives. Tennessee, Georgia won that game, let's be honest. I thought Georgia was a more physical team. But Tennessee hurt themselves with penalties. You said eight? They had eight false starts, David? That's that what I stopped days? counting. That's, that is so many. More. I don't care what type of offense you, you, you run. But obviously reloading, the way that, that Georgia reloads, Georgia's going to be replacing Stetson Bennett. I don't think he has a 33rd year. Uh, if Hendon does leave, which I think he will. I mean, look, you got the Nico kid coming in as a freshman. He'll have some time to get ready, get used to college and playing. If he's the guy, I know Josh Heupel will be fine at quarterback. And the best part about that system is it can turn an elite quarterback out of a good quarterback hmm. because a lot of the stuff is predetermined. The throws are a little bit simpler. That's not to take anything away from Hendon, not to take away from him reading coverage or anything like that. Uh, but you're going to have to reload the way George reloads, and you, you can't penalize yourself as much. And you get him at home next year. That's a big deal. All right, we're going to bring Tom Luganville in here. First, we want to, let's go ahead and throw our, you want to throw our power ranking graphic up there so yeah. Tom can see it? Let's throw our power right ranking graphics up there, our top 12 teams in the country to show Lugs. Let's go ahead and throw that up there. Okay, I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. All right, hey, Lugs, can you hear us? I hear you, but I can't see it. All right, I'm going to read it out for you. We're going to do this Helen Keller All style. Right. You ready? All right. Yeah. Uh, Georgia at one, Michigan at two, Ohio State at three, TCU at four, 
Tennessee at five, Oregon at six, USC at seven, UCLA at eight, LSU at nine, Bama at 10, Ole Miss at 11, Clemson at 12, Bishop Sycamore at 13. What do you think about the, the power rankings there? I know I, in audio, that probably helps you guys out a lot as well. Do you have any qualms with it here, Lukes, from what I just said? I think Michigan's too high at two, and I would have USC at 12 or 13. Okay, Michigan, so you think Ohio State should be in front of Michigan? I think Ohio State has more explosive capabilities that can give you advantages throughout the course of the game. Right now, Michigan does not have a great ability to create explosive plays, and they have not been a great red zone offense all year long. Um, I think that, again, given the schedule to this point, who they've played, particularly the early schedule for, for Michigan, and even Ohio State for that matter, until they play each other, they're really not going to play a team that matches up with one another mm -hmm. until it's Ohio State uh, versus Michigan. But for those areas I just mentioned, that's probably why I would give Ohio State a slight edge. Unless See it's windy and raining. And then C.J. Stroud can't play. Hey, well, yeah, we saw what happened against Northwestern. That's what happened last year. Yeah, that's exactly what happened last year. I And, and I, I'm going to take the – I'm not going to let Cone even have the opportunity to jinx Michigan here. I'm going to take this one so we can move on, Cone. It's what friends do. <laughs> Friend, friends that let friends Michigan. talk junk. Uh, Lugs, I think Michigan is more physical than Ohio State. I'm worried about the physicality be. of Ohio State. Like, I'm really legitimately worried about it. And, you know – as I watched them throughout the year, I was like, you know what? This defense, we know how talented they are. I thought the defense played really physical against Notre Dame. I thought they've set the tone a lot. But going against Northwestern, we know Northwestern's not exactly the globe trotters when it comes to spreading the ball out offensively. The weather was bad. It was windy. It was rainy. You yep. knew that Northwestern was going to run it. I knew that Northwestern was going to run it. They knew that Northwestern was going to run it. All the animals that live in my house, including the three-legged cat, knew Northwestern was going to run it, yet they were still able to find a way to push Ohio State back on multiple occasions, and they got after him a little bit up front. Are you worried a little bit about the physicality of Ohio State, Lukes? Probably not overall. Um, you know, and I'm, and I'm looking at, at, at college football as a whole to this point, and, you know, this is really the first time we've seen – Ohio State play down to the level of competition, is it not? I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is the really the only time they've done that. But we've seen teams do that. We've seen Georgia do it twice. Um, I think it happens sometimes. And I'm not making excuses for Ohio State, but I think throughout the course of the of the year, you're playing a one and seven team. You're on the road. You don't look to be highly motivated or inspired. And I thought they played that way. Northwestern's got everything to gain and nothing to lose. They're they're essentially just playing for pride right now. The weather played into their advantage because it, it nullified the explosive elements of Ohio State mm -hmm. offensively. So I think it was a bit of a bad recipe, if, if you will. If, if, if you told me that Ohio State's going to go and, and play against a top five or a top ten team and that they would show up and be soft, that would really, really surprise me. Yeah, I, look, I, I agree. The recipe wasn't exactly great when you look at the weather and things like that. I just And, and it's hard to get your team up to play yeah. every game emotionally. I always say getting a team up isn't getting them excited to play. Everybody's excited to play. You have to wait a week in between games. You're excited to play. It's about execution. If everybody yeah. played as excited as they were, nobody would ever play bad. That's not how it works. Right. It's, it's being <laughs> able to execute. But speaking about execute, yeah. there's a huge one in the Big 12 this weekend. TCU goes to Texas. Quinn Ewers versus Max Duggan. That will be like a Globetrotters game offensively, at least the way it looks. How do you like the, uh, the Horn Frogs going into Austin this weekend against Quinn Ewers and the alien that is B. John Robinson? Do they have a chance to win, you think? I, I think they have a chance to win because they've shown each and every week they find ways to win. Um, now, listen, they've had some good matchups that happened to be in Eamon G. Carter Stadium there in Fort Worth that, that has, I think, given them a huge advantage. And now they're going to go on the road versus a team that and I can pretty fairly, I think I can predict exactly what could happen here with this one because this is what Texas does. Steve Sarkeesian is so good at scheming people, getting people in a position where our best guys versus your worst defender, we're going to get the ball to him. And he does a remarkable job of it in the first half. And if you've noticed, when he does that, he goes into the second half, and he may have a 10-point lead or a 14-point lead, or as it was last week, what, a 24-point lead in Manhattan. And then all of a sudden, they get in the second half, and instead of just lining up 
and given it to number five and just say, we're going to be better than you. He continues to try to scheme and come up with this way and that way. And then guess what? A team jumps back into it. They get back into the game and they were fortunate to win last week. It cost them against Oklahoma state on the, on, on the road three weeks ago when they were up by 14 in complete control of the game. And then, you get cute in the second half. And I think the way Texas wins this game, number one, they got the best players in the in the Big 12 overall, top to bottom. Doesn't make them the best team, but they got the best players and they're playing at, playing at home. But how the second half plays out, in my opinion, is going to be really, really interesting mm-hmm. because number five is going to be the best player on the field for both teams. I think Quentin Johnston's a close second. But if you're if you get any type of lead, and I'm not saying you play not to lose, but I'm saying if you let's not get cute here. You get a lead against an undefeated TCU team, and you have the opportunity to line up and get the ball into the hands number five as often as you possibly can, which, by the way, they made no attempt to do at Oklahoma State, and it was one of the reasons they lost the game, then I think Texas has a great opportunity to win this one. It's like my father said when Pat Dye was with Bo Jackson at practice, somebody asked him, hey, what style offense do you run? He pointed at Bo Jackson and said, that style. (laughs) <laughs> I'd run that. Yeah, I'd run right. that style too if I had Bo Jackson yeah. on my team. <laughs> on the, and, and that you know that gets me thinking about the 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 Michigan point, uh, Tom. You were saying I, I agree with you on the expo- explosive plays or lack thereof, especially through the air. But they're getting some of those explosive plays on the ground because Blake yep. Corum is that good. And what I was telling these guys is, if you're a Michigan fan right now, you have to be excited that not only are you un- unbeaten, but you're playing pretty good football and balanced football without sure. those explosive plays through the. Air because J.J. McCarthy is just missing some of those. And I think he's mm-hmm. going to start to hit some of those later in the season. But you may think I'm crazy, Tom. And some Michigan fans may think I'm crazy, too. That game is on the road this year in the horseshoe, right, which is significant. I would almost rather go there and play the Buckeyes on the road in the elements rather than play them on a neutral site indoors mm-hmm. and allow C.J. Stroud and that elite offensive, uh, that wide receiver core to take over. What do you think about that? Well, I think based off of what we saw in Evanston, uh, you're 100% correct. I mean, that mm-hmm. that was a football team offensively that could not function uh, with elements. And when you watch, watch C.J. Stroud, I mean, I'm in my hotel room. We're out west, got SC and Cal, so we got to watch the whole day's uh, mm-hmm. allotment of games. He wasn't just missing guys. I mean, he was airmailing guys that were open, and it was mm-hmm. he couldn't control the football. Now – 30 mile per hour sustained winds. Is that going to be happening in the horseshoe? Probably, probably not, depending on if it's wet, cold, damp, what have you. That remains to be seen. But if there are conditions, which there can be at that time of the year, whether you're in Ann Arbor or you're in Columbus, then yeah, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take on an Ohio State team on an AstroTurf field under a dome. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's, a, it's going to be a track meet, and that's not what you want. No, exactly. Hey, LSU. Huge win over Alabama this weekend. Uh, I mean, look, two loss, two loss LSU team is now in the driver's seat in the SEC West. Looks like they have a shot to go to Atlanta, Tom. I mean, does this LSU team have a legitimate chance to win the Southeastern Conference? And if they do, would they be a shoe in for the college football playoff with two losses? Well, they have a legitimate chance if they keep playing well and they stay healthy because they're gaining confidence and they're peaking at the right time. Now, if you recall, the last team to win a national championship with two losses was LSU. Now, That's that was prior to the college football playoff, but mm. I think that the, the Southeastern Conference um, re- receives uh, so much acclaim that whether you're an undefeated one-loss or two-loss team, you're going to be in the discussion. I also think that has something to do with what else happens around the, mm-hmm. the country. You know, uh, Clemson losing helped everybody. All right, and that that was that's that was huge for the Pac-12. Could be big for the Big 12, depending on what happens with TCU. Um, but I'll tell you, man, LSU. Yeah, you know, I, I went, I watched that game. I went right to the team stats line. And there's a few that I look at because I think they matter for winning, losing turnovers. Alabama turned it over. LSU didn't. Yep. Third down conversion rate on offense. LSU was better. Rush attempts. Rush attempts was embarrassing. Alabama would not run the football. I don't know why LSU did. That made a huge difference uh, in in the ball game. So there were some significant factors. Oh, and by the way, the penalty bug, that hasn't gone away either. More penalties Mm -hmm. for Alabama than there was uh, for LSU. And in a game where the two teams are so evenly matched, comes down to a little mistake here or there. They won that game by one point. 
What if Bryce Young doesn't make the boneheaded play on the first drive of the game on the yep. four-yard line? Yep. Tom, I mean, it's, uh, it, it comes down to little moments like that. Tom, I said I, I felt like that was the one that gave him momentum and let LSU think, hey, because remember how LSU had started games? They'd always oh, started yeah. slow. Ole Miss, Auburn, Tennessee, I can go through the list. They were on pace. They didn't go three and out. They went six and out, punted. Bama went straight down the field. It was like five plays, yeah. right on script, bang, bang, bang. Bryce tries to improvise and was like, everybody took a deep breath for LSU and was like, oh, it's still 0 0. It's, it's yeah. a football game, boys. That's it. All right. All right, Tom. I'll kind of get a little update on the Heisman. We talked about this earlier. Right now, you know, who do you have on the top of your Heisman list and why? Uh, Drake May. <laughs> and I. And if, if he's not in New York, I've already volunteered. Spit those Mac facts, Brown. Tom. I, 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 I told Mac Brown I would drive up from my home in Charlotte, pick him up, and drive him up to New York if I have to. Um, if you're not paying attention to what this kid's doing, this kid's going to be a top five draft pick. He is special. And he's doing it on a team that defensively has no business even probably being ranked. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that's happening with North Carolina is because of Drake May. My close second would be Caleb Williams. Because without Caleb Williams, USC is a 500 ball club. They are so bad on defense, and it's getting completely masked by the magician that is Caleb Williams. And listen, Lincoln Riley and that staff deserve a ton of credit. Um, but wow. I mean, those two <laughs> players to me mean so much to their football team that those would be my one and two right now. Well, they said Drake was dropping an album last Saturday. I was like, y'all are crazy. I've been watching him drop a mixtape every Saturday <laughs> since the season started. All right, let's go to Dakota Blackburn. Tommy wants to know, what do you make out of Mike Norvell's turnaround season at FSU? And do you think he's the coach to bring FSU back to the national stage? Yeah, I, I, I believe that he's more than capable of doing that. Now, they had a bad three-game skid that actually started with a game that I had in Wake Forest. And they unfortunately, they had to play Wake, NC State, and Clemson in a three-week stretch. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and um, NC State had Devin Leary at the time. Um, Clemson was kind of playing hot. And so if those games would have been spread out throughout the schedule, I think they'd have at least one more win. But that notwithstanding, what he's done is he's cleaned up the locker room. He's cleaned up the team dynamic. That was the, one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem prior to his arrival, is this is a football team. You'd look at them and you'd stand on the sideline. You go, they've got, they have athletes. Mm -hmm. right? They've got football players. But they had, I don't think they had good people. And I don't think they had a healthy locker room. And until that got changed, however it is you go about changing that, um, nothing was going to improve as far as on-field results. So he seems to have cleaned up that part of it. And, you know, they're a competitive athletic team that's capable of taking the field and playing well against everybody they play and having a chance to win against every, everybody they play. And you could not say that about that team even last year. Mm -hmm. All right, Tom, before we let you out of here, Tom Luganville, ESPN, we, we got a little surprise that we put together. We typically do one of these every week, but this is we took our top 12 that we just laid out. All right, All right, and we put it into the playoff bracket format. Now, I want to say this. People will look and say, hey, how does the sixth seed have a bye? We took it the way it was written, okay, that the top four ranked Power Five conference champions would get the bye. Not bye. one through four in the seating, okay? So that okay. doesn't mean, all right, so in the top left, Georgia we have as the one seed, they would play the winner of, wait for it, UCLA and LSU. You remember when Edo went out to UCLA oh. and said, why y'all wearing those sissy blue uniforms? Yeah. <laughs> well, we got another matchup, fellas, <laughs> coming back in your living room, Brian Kelly. Then you go down, TCU gets a bye as the four seed, winner of the Big 12. They would play the winner of Tennessee and Ole Miss. A showdown we didn't Over. get to see uh, during the regular season. These two teams yeah. don't play each other. That would be a hell of a matchup. Then in the top right, we have Michigan as the two seed getting the bye, playing the winner of USC and Alabama. Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams and Bryce Young, the SoCal quarterback battle, even though it seems like every quarterback is from Southern California, including Jaden Daniels. Did not realize <laughs> Bryce Young just played against everybody that he plays against now yeah. when they were Friday Night Tight. <laughs> it's like DJU, JT Daniels, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Are we recruiting like the same like the, little group? Is this the Mickey Mouse Mickey Club? Mouse Club it's it's not, the Mickey it's Mouse not, Club. That's what it is. Timberlake, Brittany, and everybody else. All right, so if you go down to the bottom, Oregon is the sixth seed would get the bye, representing the Pac-12, which is now the Pac-10. They play the winner of... Ohio State and Clemson. Mm. I tell you what, fellas, I don't know a lot about a lot, 
but I do know a lot about this. That'd be and that would be freaking awesome if that happened, Tom. Hey, you just, you just sold America on why expansion needs to happen. That's exactly right. I'm the second person to do that. The first person to do that, what, what, what was that famous person that did the Louisiana Purchase? God. Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. Oh, TJ? <laughs> oh, TJ. The best Jefferson said, well, K- KJ's a little more physical than him. But, uh, Tom, we really appreciate it, my friend. What are you calling this weekend? Uh, well, I'm in a hotel room right now. I've got Maxson tonight, so I've got Ohio uh, at yes. Miami of Ohio. Okay, okay. Right. I, I then, know um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I got Utah and Stanford uh, on Saturday mm, night on ESPN. Mm, the smart ones versus the piss ones. That'll be interesting. Yep. Uh, yeah, we got some action tonight. Everybody's talking about midterms and elections, Tom. But what do you mean midterm? All right, I'm watching Maxson. This is America. You're right. the Mid-American Conference. That's what I'll be doing tonight. We really <laughs> appreciate you, my friend, as usual. All right, guys. Have a great week. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Lugs. Lugs. Lugs coming from a hotel room near you. Man, that guy's like Carmen. I really want to play this tournament out. I, I do too. You want to so, play it out? You want to play it out right now? Let's play it out. Let's play it out right now. All right, let's go. All right, uh, winner of UCLA LSU will go around the room. Cone, who do you got? Wh- wh- which one are we starting? UCLA with? LSU. LSU. Man, I'm gonna take LSU here, boys. Give me the Tigers. I okay? am taking UCLA. Are You're you? bullish on UCLA. I took Dude, LSU I'm at the Oak Bowl last year, and I was wrong, and I lost money on that game. Mm-hmm. LSU. I, you know, if I bet on LSU, they're gonna lose. So I would just pick LSU, mm. not bet on them, mm. go Tigers. You'd love to see it. All right. So that would give me give, yeah. me give me LSU. You got LSU? Yeah, Brian Kelly. All right. So we'll say LSU advances. Georgia, LSU, rematch of the SEC championship game, possibly. Mm. David, where are you at? I'm going to go Bulldogs. You're going Bulldogs? I'm going to go Bulldogs. They have separated them. I'm going to go Georgia. Georgia in a beatdown. I'm going to go In a beatdown? I don't know in a beatdown. I think Jaden Daniels' legs. Yeah, 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 that ain't going to work against Georgia. Like, yeah, our hey, DN's faster here. than you. Hey, come here. You're, Just Nolan Smith, he also plays slot and he's 6'7". Yeah, it's like actually Nolan Smith, he also plays slot receiver and he's 6'7". And he's not even playing. That's yeah. how crazy it is. All right, uh, so we'd have Georgia advancing, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, to the Final Four. It's so cool to say that, and we'll never say that in basketball. Uh, shout out Tom Crean. Uh, uh, let's see, we got Tennessee and Ole Miss. Mm. Blaine, who wins? Give me the volunteers. I'm going balls. Give me the Tennessee. volunteers. Going balls. All right, TCU, Tennessee. It's a thousand points. Rocky top, boy. You're going Rocky top? Give me Rocky be, top. I'm going Rocky top. Got to be Tennessee. Just I'm better. going Rocky it's top. It's a better football. I thought you might go TC. No, nah, nah, I'm going Rocky top there. You want to go TCU? I'm Max going, Duggan? I'm going Rocky top. Why are y'all trying to talk me into this? Huh? Like, you like TCU. You're you're taking TCU. No, 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 I'm taking TCU. Tennessee. Yeah. So Georgia will end up playing Tennessee. <laughs> the battle of the SEC East. <laughs> All right, then go to the right side. USC and Alabama, guys. I got to go with Bama because USC's defense is made of bubblegum tears and hopes and dreams. Mm. Did, is Bill O'Brien, tackle. did they name Bill O'Brien the head coach yet? Not yet. Then give me Alabama. So, yeah, give me Bama. All right. Uh, so then we'd have Bama versus Michigan. Ooh, Again, a David. House divided. A Again. House divided. My side of the house needs one. Okay, need, we're tired right. of losing to Alabama. Give me the boys in blue. Blake Advance Corum. Them. Blake Corum. Touchdown run in overtime to win the game. Give me Michigan. Give me, give me Bama. Bryce Young is the difference. You have no idea. Bryce okay. Young in the playoffs. So now there's difference. three. As you have Georgia, Tennessee, Bama in the final. The crazy thing is this is probably what would happen. Yeah. All right. Wait, hold uh, on. Who are you taking? I'm taking uh, Michigan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. All right. So Michigan yeah. advance. Ha, 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 ha. wants to put Bama up? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> the, the Freudian the slip. Minute, yeah. No. <laughs> he knows. No. You're yeah. the last one I talked to. All right. Ohio State, Clemson. I got to go uh, Ohio State. I just don't think the quarterback position is good enough. Yeah. I, I, one thing I don't believe in is DJU. That's for sure. For sure. Uh, Oregon and Ohio State. This, guys, this one. Golly, awesome. what a ball game that would be. Got to be Ohio State. Give me the Buckeyes. Got to be Ohio State. Give me the Ducks. Give me the Buckeyes. Bo Nix. Bo Nix, CJ Stroud. This would be Fire indoors. Rangers. This would be indoors. It'd be on AstroTurf. Oh, damn, Marvin man, Harrison Jr. Hey, I just scored again. And then that's exactly what we talked about yesterday, guys. I said, what if it's Georgia, Tennessee, Michigan, Ohio, two oh. Big Ten teams, two SEC rival teams games in the final two four. Two rivalry games in the final four. What else do you want, America? What else? What else? I mean, heck, that, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. Shh. Holy Darn macaroni. It. Give me to Oregon. Stop it. You stop it. That I'm would there. legitimately be Dan See, now I'm that excited. would be a fun football game. Now I'm super Hold excited. On. Hey, and that could be the game we get in the Rose Bowl this year. Could be. I mean, think about it. If could Oregon, be. if Oregon, Oregon wins the Pac-12 but doesn't make the college football playoff, would probably get the loser 
of Michigan, Ohio, if that second team doesn't make if the TCU playoff. If TCU goes undefeated. Right, yeah. yeah. That could be a Rose Bowl matchup. Hey, Kevin, are y'all going to beat Ohio State or what? I need to know. Huh? Are y'all going to beat Ohio hey, State or what? You'll find out. That week's I need coming. To that week is hey, don't approaching. Don't, don't, I need dude, to don't peer pressure him. I'm not. Don't peer pressure I'm him. I'm not. Maybe I am. I think you are. I'll you tell you if you don't shoot me in the back with a paintball gun. Uh, no, you're getting I'm shot in the back. I'm shooting you in the back five times. Yeah. But I'd never stab you in the back. There, that's totally different. That's totally different. Getting shot back. in the back's one thing. Stabbed in the back, not You know what? I problem. felt that right here. Yeah. And even though it's going to hurt back here, it is. I felt good in here. It might hurt back here, but it's all love in here. Yeah. Thank that's you. all that counts. That's all that counts. All well, right. Speaking about love. We, we want to go to the booster club? Let's do it. We want to go to the people real quick? Um, let's go to J Chain. All right. He wants, a, he wants a hashtag ones. Ask Tom, but he's going to hashtag Ask Us. All right. All right. He says, what's your prediction for the Auburn-Texas A&M game? If both teams could lose, they'd find Auburn. a way to do it. Give me I would say Auburn is there at Williams. home and Haynes King throws like an eight-year-old girl. God, Haynes King's helmet just scared uh, Wait, are they not going to start Connor Wegman? Are they starting Wegman? I, I know Haynes well, he, is... Well, he was sick. He, he was, Hold on, he had the catch flu. me up on this. So they, they had like 19 players out with... Texas A&M. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I, I would guess Wegman would play, but I want to okay. wait until I officially hear something. Okay. I'm sure an A&M fan in the chat will tell us. But even if Wegman plays, you're going to Jordan Hare. Cadillac's just got everybody running around screaming, having a good time. Give me Auburn just finding a way. If A&M loses to Auburn, you go three and seven. I mean, it's, oh, man. <laughs> it's not a good situation. Oh, they're ranked like fifth, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even win a game. <laughs> they can't even win a game. Hey, oh, oh, but they still beat Miami. Don't worry, Jimbo's going to fix it. They beat Miami. Huh? They still yeah, beat Miami. Yeah, they beat Miami. <laughs> Coach K beat Miami this year for Duke. All right, let's go Carson Everett. <laughs> Five dollar donation. <laughs> Thank you, I've Carson. got two extra tickets to Crowder and some other thing at the Ryman this weekend. Would y'all want to take them off my hands? I'm good, bro. Yeah, I gotta Going watch tickets. games, bro. Yeah. Wait, Crowder is at the Ryman this week? Yeah. You want the tickets? What time? Do you know when they told me what the Ryman was? I literally like the first thing that in my mind went was like the shelter off Eight Mile. That's what I thought too. Like it was like a place you go to rap battle. Like yeah. all the really. That's like what you thought the Ryman slam. Auditorium. That's was? what I thought the Ryman. They're was. out there poetry slam. Like, like, in a way, walk, you don't know. I was gonna walk in there. It's gonna be like step up. How five. I feel. The people in there and just when you look down at me, my life, yours too. Wait, is that your rap battle? That was poetry slam. Oh, poetry slam. Is that right. how they do it? I don't know. I don't know, man. I've been to a poetry I don't slam. know. Guess what, Dave? <laughs> Kiss my what? Don't you say That's rude. No, that's rude. That's rude. Okay. It's still a funny thing. You remember off uh, Ted? Don't look at me with a beard. Ted, when they're doing yeah. the comedian things and they're asking for subjects in the crowd. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. All right, let's go to Tyree's $2 donation. He says, Tyree's Ohio funny. State's dog water. Ooh. Cone. Their dog water. Cone, your opinion. Michigan by 40. Cone. Cone, Talking your opinion. This mic Look, right I've here. watched opinion, this. Cone. I have seen this movie too many times, fellas. I'm just telling you. Can they go and beat Georgia right now? I don't think so. I don't see okay. it happening. I think I think the Buckeyes versus Tennessee would be a great game, just like we just talked about with Oregon. I'm just telling you, if you're watching, if you're watching Ohio right now and you think that they're that they're awful and they're not going to show up to play when it matters, I don't I, it's yeah, a scary I would, game, I would, boys. I it is a scary, game. scary They're not going to come out like they did against Northwestern in a in a Snow hurricane or whatever it was. Now, I tell you, one Sounds thing that terrible. does, one thing that does. <laughs> it, I mean, so if you're a Buckeyes fan, you are worried right now about the two running backs, and it's not because they're not good. And the O line, okay, it's because help. they're banged up. Travion, Travion Henderson didn't make the trip to Northwestern, and Mayan Williams was banged up the week before. Yeah. They only took three running backs on the road in that game against Northwestern in the in the sleet, in the hail, in the snow, and you're expecting C.J. Stroud to just throw it around like yeah. it, what? What would he? What did he just say? Forty mile an hour winds? No, it, you, not, tell. you they, have to be able to run the football in the Midwest. In November. They exactly. interviewed Ryan Day before the game, and he was like Jim Cantori when he goes to like the place that are hurricane. It's like where the worst is. He's like, I'm in the eye of the storm right now. It's, it's like always, I was waiting to see like a person like uh, blowing behind it's Ryan Day. It's always like, like that. There's just some, some person just walking normally perfectly fine across the street hey. behind them. Yeah, you know, you know, when they're like this, like walking like the wind's bad, and then somebody's like, hey, uh, is that I, Jim Cantori? I get to, hey. I get you. you have to and say. another thing, too. Ohio's won every game this season by double-digit points. Still, yeah, still, yeah. I mean, that's you can say Ohio State. Hmm? You're confusing. You you're confusing the fans. It's oh, Mac because there's Mac action tonight. Mac action, yeah. I don't want to confuse the fans. That's what you're doing. Like right now, with Sue Beyond Chick says, "Is he purposely leave off the Ohio State when oh, talking they about they Ohio State?" They're getting I'm confused. 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 Yeah, they're getting confused. Say it. Huh? No, I'm not gonna say <laughs> it. <laughs> you're gonna say it. All right, it. I'm gonna walk over the board of justice, truth, love, life, loss, and Levin. But before I do that. 
you want to watch the rest of this, you can listen to me stay here. Head over to the Daily Wire Plus. Become a member. Listen to us on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, Stitcher, String in a Cup, that one place you don't tell your parents you run off to when you get in trouble, and leave a five-star review and share it with all your friends. We'll be right back with the Booster Club Leaderboard and so much more. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking with us. Want to hit the Booster Club leaderboard real quick. Uh, Remember, I send out a Booster Club bet tweet every morning. I put it on Facebook, all the social media apps that I know. You just click on that Google form, you fill it out on the computer machine, and then it will pop your score up and we'll know how you're doing. But you can still put memes underneath the tweet. I want those memes. So Sasha Booster Club is 4-0. So is EJ Runis. It's me, Emmanuel C is 2-0, Johnson TC, Cody. Revco 250, the Graphic King, Cody Nason 94 are all 1-0, Jacob Brown, Neftink, Ulrich Sharbers 0-1, uh, Neftink and Jacob Brown are both 0-0, and Portman Toet is 0-2. Let's go, guys. Did we, Let's did go we have middle. someone who's like 0-8? Huh? Yeah, I think they hit. Let's go. I think, they, I think it was... Uh, uh, 0-8? Let's celebrate I'm that. I remember first. who it was. I'm trying to remember exactly who it was. Wait, it was... Uh, it was it not Katie? I think it may have been Katie. Girl's name. Katie? Yeah, it was Katie, I think. Where's Where's B Samp? Is anyone fading B Samp recently? I don't know. Let's see how B Samp is. Uh, now, we can't put, obviously, everybody's record in there. There's probably a ton of 1 and O's and O and O's and O and 2's and stuff like that. Uh, all right, Code, mailbag. Mailbag. One here from Jenna. Jenna. Hello, boys. I have a question about the locker room and the role it plays in how well a team does during a season. Can a cancer in the locker room derail the most talented team? And can a solid locker room make an okay team? Super Bowl champions. Sincerely, good vibes only. Yes, Jenna, thank you for that question. The first one, yes, a cancer can ruin a whole team from the inside out because what does cancer do? It spreads. Typically, one person's upset. Maybe I'm not playing enough. Maybe I'm not getting paid enough. This, that, and the other. Something, and they talk. Maybe the co- I don't like this coach. They start talking. They try and get other people to believe how they feel. And then it grows and grows and grows. That's why the best thing when you have a cancer in the locker room is the best thing to do when they find cancer on you. You cut it out. You get a biopsy, you feel out what's going on, and you adjust from there. On the other side, a a good culture in the locker room, a bunch of guys working together, can take good teams and make them great. Now, can it win them a Super Bowl, the elite of the elite? I think you need a mixture of talent, coaching, and a solid locker room to do that. But it can make up for some deficiencies from a talent standpoint uh, uh, by having that strong culture, by having guys that that are all moving in the same direction, understand the expectations, and they're accountable. Mm -hmm. So yes on the first, a little bit on the second. All right, this is an important one here. I think this came in... um right before the World Series started, but this is from Chris. With baseball banning the shift, are they turning their back on one of the most fundamental components of the sport? What incentive is there for players to possess the skill of hitting the other way? Uh, Is there no strategic, is there no longer a strategic advantage? Think about some of the most exciting players to watch at the plate, Gwen, Ichiro, Jeter. He said, hey, I watched five hours of baseball the other day. The most exciting moments were when five dudes whose names I don't even remember got bats on balls and were not swinging for the fences. Banning the shift is going to change baseball, not for the better, regardless of how big they make the bags. Keep doing what you're doing, fellas. Love the show. Chris, appreciate that. Here's my thing on my problem with with banning the shift. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of the shift. I'm not in love with it. I am with you, though. I don't understand why people, and I know the pitchers are trying to pound you inside when everybody's going to a certain side of the field to make you hit it that way. But pitchers still make mistakes. You can still position yourself to be able to hit it where they ain't. Remember the old saying, hit it where they ain't. Well, that's gone out the window with launch angle. Everybody's trying to hit home runs. People are fine with hitting 30 home runs and batting 215. You can make $10 million a year doing that now, which I think goes against the essence of what you're trying to do in baseball. But the reason I don't like the banning of the shift is from a coaching standpoint, that's like telling me I can't put both my safeties back. That's like that, that's like telling me that, that oh, well, no, 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 you can't blitz. You can't blitz on this play like it's the senior bowl. But to me, as long as, like in football, as long as I'm not crossing the line of scrimmage, I should be able to put my players wherever the hell I want to put them. That's my problem. As a coach, if I want to put my second baseman in between first and second, I should be able to do that. I should put, be able to put my players, as long as he's not in the box next to the batter or he's not in front of where the ball's coming, I don't understand uh, the problem with it. And I'm a baseball purist. 
If it was me, I'd probably play it straight up. My problem with banning the shift is that you're making a coaching decision for the coach for really no reason. That, that, that's my problem. Well, the thing about this, I don't really, do I like the shift? No. Do I care if they have it or not? Not really. But understand what the major league is trying to do right here. They're not worried about fans like you, Chris. So obviously, you know baseball, right? You know, <laughs> you know watching Derek Jeter hits it's an point. art form. Watching Ichiro hits an art form. Tony Gwynn hitting, it's an art form. They don't want that, right? They want runners on bases. They want home runs. They want, they want it to be flashy so they can get the what? The new viewer, right? The younger kids, right? Because that's what baseball, that's what younger kids, our generation, them growing up, that's what it is. They want it all and they want it now. So I get what you're saying, but it's really hard to hit 100 miles per hour fastball that's inside the other way. All right, analytics show up, numbers are numbers. I get it to a certain extent, but that's not what the major league wants. You're a baseball purist. You're going to watch it regardless. All right. They banned it they or not. You're going to watch it. But they're going after it for the younger crowd. Yeah. That's what the answer. Also, we talked about this with Ben Shapiro when he was in last week. And I think that that interview is going to be out on YouTube cool. today. So check that out. Uh, we're talking about some of the new rules of Major League Baseball, banning the shift, uh, things like that. All right. Here's the last one from Blaine. B-L-A-N-E. Ooh. Okay. Hello, boys, and yes, you have met your flaming dragon twin. Ooh! Your twin flaming dragon. Mm. My question is about dating. I want to go on a third date with this girl, and I want to take her to a sporting event okay. to see if she's worth a fourth date. Ooh. We live in a city with an NFL team okay. and an NHL team. Which game should I take her to if money weren't an option, just strictly based on the environment that would be best for a date? Came for Ben, stayed for Knowles, and subscribed for hey, Greening Company. You love to see it. Uh, first off, congrats on getting a three. Let's go. Uh, that, that's a Let's big go. deal. Here's my answer on that. Love football. You know I love football, mm -hmm. right? It's my favorite sport. I'll keep it a stiz here. Football's my favorite sport. But let's think about the elements and where you're at. All right? I don't know what city you're in. So I don't know how cold it is to go to the NFL game. I don't know if you're in a dome. I don't know if you're outside. But I do know that the NHL is played in a dome, mm. and it's played on ice, which is cold. What does cold create? You being cold, which creates her being cold, which creates you guys hugging it up a little bit, getting a little bit closer, moving the relationship forward. Let's share body heat, but in a way that won't get us sent to jail because we're in public. I feel like you eat, there's big hits. Get as close to the rink as possible. You're going to see physicality. She's going to be grabbing on you because she's cold. You're going to be watching grown men with blades on the bottom of their feet run full speed, speed in, in, into each other into a wall. <laughs> it's got to be an NHL game to me, uh, even though, like I said, football is my favorite sport. I'm just telling you, I think and if she sounds down the way I think she sounds down, I think you're going to definitely want that fourth date. I, I think you're definitely going to want that. The biggest question, I'm going to throw this back on you, Flaming Dragon clone, is how much does she know about sports? Does she know enough? Does she not know enough? Does she know too much? Let us know on that. That's the correct answer. Yeah. Really. Take her to an NHL game. I'm taking her to an NFL game. One, I need you to know how much, how important football is to me. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to know that Sundays at 12 o'clock, there's going to be nothing but Blaine on that couch watching seven hours of commercial Shout football. out Scott Hansen. If there's Saturday, baby, this is my job, right? This is my job. I got to watch these games. I don't got I got to watch hockey to a certain extent. Am I in love with hockey? No, I'm not. Am I in love with football? You're damn right, all right? So one, baby, I need you to look good at the game. We're going to tailgate. We're going to have a good time. And two, we're going to go in the game, depending on the team. We'll probably stay, maybe, depending on the game. We don't have to stay the full game, maybe first half. Dr. Scott, Rick. Feeling and something like that. They go, but if it's me, I'm going football because she needs to know early, right? She needs to know early, like, this matters to me, right? A lot. So you're going to Dr. Rick that thing. Huh? You're going to yeah. Dr. Rick. I'm I'm gonna leave by I don't third. know if I really know what that means. It's a commercial. Remember when they're walking in the stadium and the guy's like, all right, we're going to leave probably about the third quarter. And yeah, Dr. Rick looks sure. at him and he's like, listen, let's not talk about leaving the game yeah. before, before we, we even get go to the game. That. These are compacts. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now you're vibing. These are yeah. compacts. Now you're vibing. Now you're there. Congrats on number three. He's on three, he's going on four. All right. No, no. I think he's going on the third to see if there needs, needs to, be to be a, a four. four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to find out. NHL game. You're welcome. Uh, all right. I want to get to these bets. Obviously, last month after the dominance that happened, uh, God was going to make me pay this month. And he is. I'm 8 and 14 right now after the Saints. Long way to go. Uh, decided to not come marching in last night. That's all I'm going to say about that. 14 and 8. Why is he too? Um, I know. Baby Cone always does this. Here's what I got tonight. It's my action. All right. One last month. Feeling good in the green. More units in an apartment complex. But, but, we need to make a run here. 
We need to make a run get back a little bit. So my first bet's going to be a little bit of a parlay, guys. Give me Toledo money line. The Rockets blasting off. Eastern Michigan, the Eagles taking off. Those are both money line. And then give me Miami, Ohio. Uh, or Miami, Ohio versus Ohio, the over at 50 and a half. All three of those are at plus 231. Toledo win, Eastern Michigan win, the over in Miami versus Ohio. It is Miami of Ohio playing Ohio. Why do we make this so confusing? Uh, then my second bet is Ball State plus 11. Look, we all know the MAC is where white running backs go to play. All right, and Ball State's got one. He looks stri- straight up like exactly what you think Ball State's running back would look like. Thick, muscular. Is he the fastest guy? No, but it's freezing outside. We need you to run through things, not past them. He's got long blonde hair. He has a pet alligator. I'm just telling you right now, Ball State plus 11. I like it. Let's get a little emotional. This is for the Mac uh, West, I believe, title. Maybe wrong on that. Uh, somebody fact check me. Come, what do you All got? All right, one and one last night. Hit the little same game parlay, but the Ravens decided to kick the field goal in the second possession rather than the first. Dang it. Oh, oh, I got it. That was got sick. It. Nice catch, dude. Give me Eastern Michigan minus three and a half, but in the first half. All right, I want that at minus 110. Oh, you got me minus then, three and a half. Minus three and a half. I'll put you minus have? three, sorry. Minus three and a half in the there first half. You get his Eastern wife's name Michigan. Right. And then I want to take the New Jersey Devils talking about hockey money line. That's at minus 125. Boy, the Devils, the Devils are on a six-game win streak. Whew, All right. Get up off. Yeah. Six-game win streak. You love to see it. Baby Cone hit the Bruins last night, too, minus one and a half. Yeah, he did. I think we're undefeated hockey bets this month between y'all two. I don't think mm. we lost. Uh, I think we missed Hit one. the Canes. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Minus one and a half. All right, Blank. All right. Um, shout out to the Flyers, by the way. Six and three. Let's keep it up, boys. All right, give me Toledo money line in the under at 51 and a half. A lot of running the ball in this game. It's going to be plus 120. We'll see. Hashtag Giants, Giants. And give me <laughs> Ohio money line. One and oh the, uh, this year with Ohio. All right. Stay. What's the Offense quarterback's name? Hot. K- Kate, you, what's it? York? Oh, uh, uh, Rourke. 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 Beto O'Rourke. That's not him. All right. No, That's no, a no. total. No, would Beto O'Rourke's the quarterback I, of Ohio. Yeah. Coming to get you. Minus, one, minus 120, 10 and 12. Rough day yesterday, but the Saints didn't show up, so my bets didn't show up. All right, baby Cone. He's trying to run away with it early. He's going to take the Las Vegas Golden Knights at money line at plus 105, and he's going to take Ball State Toledo over. 15 and a half. Mm. At Golden minus Knights are 11 and one, 2, fellas. 10. I know, right? At the Maple Leaves. I know. Um, it's going to be an interesting and emotional time. Blaine, Booster Club, right. Battlestar Galactica. All right, Ryan Caliendo, $5 do- donation. Ryan. Appreciate that, Rhino. Um, Austin Raleigh is yes. going to be in Viva Stark Vegas. MSU gets back a big NFL run stuffer and our Jim Thorpe candidate. I'm jacked and t- tanned. Hashtag Hell State. Hashtag. DLU. Why would I why would I not buy I Mississippi missed. State up as much as I could until it's minus 150? Why would I not do that? It came out at 16 and a half. Mm. I'm telling you right now, this Georgia's not gonna go in there and roll up Mississippi State. I, I'm I'm just t- this is this is a Mike Leach special. I'm not saying they're gonna win, but this is gonna be a sweat. I'm telling you, Georgia fans coming off this Tennessee game. This is a Super Bowl for Mississippi State. It's kind of gone downhill for them when they had momentum. We're ranked in the top 20 early in the year. This is a one chance for them. To, to kind of get back and 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 make some moves and get back into the good graces. Will Rogers got a lot of witch in him. They got some players coming back. Not saying Mississippi State's going to win, mm. but Kirby's talked about it already this week. This is a scary game. This is a scary, scary game. This is not one you want to play right now. They may walk them like Ugga. Mm. They may walk them like Ugga. I, I don't know, man. Um, Mike Leach always messes around. I don't know around. what's going on with He me. does do that. I apologize. I missed a dono earlier. Will you something. figure it out? Oh, especially um, after Mike Leach well, hit him with the fat little girlfriend's line yesterday. Yeah, poetry. Yeah, I that. that yeah. huh? It's absolute poetry from Mike hey, Leach. Get yeah. to the donation. Well, the thing, about it, like, the thing about it is like sometimes yeah. I'll freeze right here and I'll have to refresh and you can't scroll back up. Um, so it was, a, I believe it was a $10 donation and it was the same person who talked to you about the Arch, Archie Griffin being the best running back. Yes. Oh, I remember that. What'd they say? Um, um, I don't know. But you I have can't. to know. Now I want to I know. I can't go back and look. I can't go Tell back and look. Put it in the chat again. Um, right, all right, let's go to Caleb Williams. Um, Caleb Williams in, in Caleb the Williams chat today? I was in Canada. Oh, knew he was a fan Heisman of the show. Five dollar donation. He says five schools could win the Big Ten this year: UGA, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Bama, LSU. All would dominate the Big Ten. I don't know about dominate. I don't know about dominate. But I'm going to be honest. We, I'm kind of vibing with you on this one, Caleb. I'm kind of vibing with you on this one because I do think, I do think, and and. This is going off the premise of every team playing up to their potential, right? If every team played as well as they could play, 
I could see Georgia winning the Big Ten. I could see Tennessee winning the Big Ten. I struggle seeing LSU, I'm talking about dominate now, like run through it. I struggle seeing LSU dominated. I struggle seeing Ole Miss dominated. I don't think they could stop enough people on defense. I could see Alabama dominating just because of the players that they have. All five dominating, I don't see it though. And the only what, the only game we have cross matchup is Penn State at Auburn, right? Yeah, which we, we don't talk about that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That, that wasn't really Auburn. That was that was Brian oh, Harson. Oh, I see. That was Brian Harson's illusion <laughs> of what Auburn should be. All right, let's go to Taylor E with a five dollar donation. Taylor, I appreciate it. He says USHL hockey is so much fun. Shout out to the Des Moines Des Moines Buccaneers for a seven two SmackDown over Omaha. Okay. On Saturday, I'm all for go. some US, uh, USHL. Can we let's can do we it. give uh, can we get your analysis on that match? Yeah, you talking look, about the Des Moines Buccaneers? Well, about you know, look, I, I know Des Moines. I know skated De- good. Yeah, skated no, no, no. Good. I, I know Des Moines <laughs> offensively hasn't been super explosive this year, but it mm. seems like it. The, the way they moved the puck passing it the other day, I thought was about as crisp as what I've seen. Mm. You didn't have as many offsides. You were attacking the goal. I think you had more shots on that mm. goal on goal that game than you have in the last ten, somewhere around there. So mm. it was a big win for the Des Moines Buccaneers. Smith played well. Jones. Johnson. Jones, Jones Johnson. Johnson. Jones. Ronald Johns Johnson Smith yeah. played great. Like, I just, man, top notch hockey. It was great. All right. Uh, it was Steve's action figure frenzy with the donation I miss. Sorry, Steve. He says, Blaine. He's yelling at me. <laughs> Ohio State has four, uh, has four season seasons preseason, regular season, Michigan, and bowl season. That was the donation in the chat. There it there is. There you go. There it is. You put it Archie means that much, man. It means that much. Um, let's go to Justin Decker. Hashtag ask the show. I think that's us. I took a six-game parlay this weekend. I've got Liberty minus 14. Ole Miss plus 12 and a half. LSU minus three. Tennessee minus 21. Auburn minus one and a half. And Purdue plus six and a half. And I'm bringing, am I bringing home the bag? Buddy, Auburn's probably going to blow it for you. Yeah, I would definitely uh, look around, look up. Auburn's going to blow it for you. The Purdue plus six and a half, I think Illinois is going to be super pissed uh, after blowing the game at home to Michigan State. I know Ryan Walter's given up that many points to a Michigan State offenses, offense that isn't exactly explosive. Uh, I think Illinois is going to play a lot better. I wouldn't be shocked to see Chase Brown have multiple touchdowns. That's the one that worries me the most. And guys, you know... Does anybody get the feeling that that maybe this Missouri Tennessee game could be a little bit closer than twenty one? Just I know Tennessee didn't at? play well. It's at Tennessee. Oh, they're kill them. I know they didn't play well. The only reason that that I think it may not be is that Tennessee didn't play well on offense, and they want to get back to mm-hmm. to you know being explosive and getting that vibe. You feel this like mer- they'll, they'll do you feel like they feel like they need to make a statement to yes. play themselves into yes. the playoffs? Yes. Something else said this: that Missouri defensive line, not a joke. No, no. The boys can play. Well, if you've seen Missouri outside of the past couple years, look, Nick Bolton two years ago, who's the starting inside hey, linebacker for the Chiefs right now, oh. was the whole defense. You go back and watch that tape. Oh my gosh, the things he was doing. What was it? But like last year, Missouri's front seven was absolute trash. I'm talking about come and pick the stuff up from my house every Thursday morning. Trash. Like that's how bad they were. It's but and but before that, Missouri has always stayed with some D linemen. They've always stayed with D linemen go, going back a, a long time. That's what I knew Missouri for was defensive linemen, defensive ends. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Tennessee, if they didn't play that bad against Georgia, now they got to go make statements. I may take Tennessee to cover now that I'm thinking about it because you do need to, they need to look good. They need to look yeah. good. All right, let's go to see a couple of things here. Um, let's go to Sister Riggs. Says, I went to a Brewers game. First of all, what's up, Sister Riggs? I went to a Brewers game and it was only okay because it went into exciting extra innings. Went to a Yankees Rays game and it was so painful. Yanks were her- horrible. And game was so slow. That Look hurts. at the Yankees. What do you expect? At least that you hurts. weren't there to see him blow Sister it again in the playoffs. I mean. Did they ever apologize, the Yankees? No. No, it's another day of uh, asking for apology. I'm going to be here. Consistency's king. Uh, no. I'm going to still be here. And, I mean, I saw Aaron Judge and um, John Carlos standing out talking to somebody in public. I, was, I mean, that's great. I wish you could have probably hit the ball in yeah. the playoffs. Um, <laughs> what if now Blaine just trashes the Yankees all the time? And he only says I'm going to trash the Yankees. You only say, well, so and only says like one nice thing, and they do the reverse, and they snip that thing. Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that would be yeah. the ultimate. That, I would you're, applaud that. You're a yeah. coward. You're a coward. You're probably born a coward, all right? And that's okay. You know, some people are born in this, in this world as, as soft, all right? And Kobe Bryant, you're soft, all right? You won't come to the table and say what you've done, and that's fine. You're hiding behind shadows. 
and your little keyboard, but you can watch you me right. Is Kobe Bryant soft? No, I'm saying you remember Kobe Bryant the Jeff and he looks at the other team and says soft? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why would I call Kobe Bryant soft? That's what soft? to say. Yeah, what's going on? RIP. What's up? Yeah. But no, you're, I mean, you're a coward, and I mean, you're probably, Did you call you're, probably four, coward? you're probably five, seven. And, you know, I mean, and just wears glasses and probably has pronouns. So, so what if whatever. the Yankees, like, Twitter guy was, like, 6'6"? Six, six, like, well, let's fight then. Fight me, dog. 2%, or 2% vibe. Fight me. How's the fight with Jake Paul coming along? He won't fight me. I don't know what else I have to do. He won't do it. I need Daily Wire to push it, to be honest. I mean, I mean, you, know, but you, know, you want to talk about selling tickets, you know, selling pay-per-view. Blaine's going to fight Jake, Jake Paul in the middle of the studio. Day, maybe two and a half months. The only, the only thing is we get to commentate it. That's fine. I don't care. That'd be awesome. The two of us and oh, Joe Rogan. That'd be awesome. It's a quick ride. That's all we take. All right, let's go J Chain. A hashtag ask the show. All right, we're talking about Tank Bigsby's future. Tank's future question mark. Go pro. Say one one more year of transfer. Got to be frustrated with the past two years. If I'm Tank, I'm transferring right to Georgia. I'm transferring right to the NFL. Uh, yeah. I'm going yeah. straight to the NFL draft. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Auburn has totally wasted a great running back in Tank's big, Tank Bigsby. Totally wasted him. Paul. Um, poll. All right. That's what the British Club kind of wanted. It's an easy one. All right. It was okay. It's a Tuesday. All right. Should Notre Dame join a conference? I mean, yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Don't, don't try and reverse psychology. Mm. Me. Yes. Say yes. 73%. Wow. 74%. 72%. So which one? You can go lower or higher? Lower. Wow. Should Notre Dame join a conference? Yes, 72. Oh, my yes. God. I'm so sick of saying that. We're just all over it. They say, know your audience. Know your audience. Well, there you go. There you go. He said 74 first. I want to recount. <laughs> it's election day, buddy. It is. Yeah. How many shot back and tell the Oh, there was a hanging the, chat in that situation there. Um, let's go to Allen Adams, Junior 22. I'll never forget Reggie Ball launching that ball over the hedges on fourth down to lose the game. I remember that. I remember that too. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Fourth down. Being in Auburn, I don't know how old I was, but Auburn was playing Georgia Tech. Didn't really know much about Georgia Tech, but we were right next to their band, and I've never disliked someone so much as the band leader who blew the whistle every 50 seconds. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. But Georgia Tech had a thing running around on that field. I didn't Calvin know who Johnson it was, and it was Calvin Johnson, yeah, was and he killed us. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just unfair. All right, make sure you're subscribed on all platforms, including this one. Go to uh, social media: Face Chat, Insta Snap, uh, Face Twitter back. Book, Face back. All those. Make sure you're following us. And I'm gonna throw this ball in this crate. And if I make it, I'm gonna say nothing else. You are trash. <laughs> We're going, going. You're trash. Give me the ball again. No, shoot it, Cone. No, I'm gonna make no. this. There it is. Cash money, baby. Wow, real 50% making, three real point shooter. First try. Call me Clay. You already missed the goal, too. <laughs> I didn't try and make the goal. Yeah, you did. Why'd you shoot it? Huh? I didn't shoot it. I threw it at you. I was trying to make it a tough catch. He's, you're such a liar. No, I'm not. You're such a liar. Okay, whatever. You're close Jim it Carey. out. You're Jim Carrey. I'll close you out. <laughs> the blue pin. All right. For me, my brother, and the leader of Seven Foot Island, David Cohn, we're going, going. Gone.